some news here about the Sega Super Game. I know this is going to be, uh, people are going to be pissed off just by reading this because, you know, they mentioned NFTs. But it seems different, um, I guess, than what some people were expecting. So they're saying here, Sega says its Super Game plan is multiple games and they may use NFTs. It was previously believed that the codename referred to a single triple A title. I think I think that's what everyone had thought it was when they first when they first did this partnership with with Xbox. Because if we remember back here, this was on November 1st, where Xbox and Sega created this strategic partnership. We're gonna zoom in here for you guys. And um so Sega Corporation and Microsoft have agreed in principle a strategic alliance that explores ways for Sega to produce large-scale global games in a new generation development environment built on Microsoft's Azure cloud platform, which I think Azure is going to be huge just for the entire industry going forward. You're going to have a lot of these uh, these companies jumping in to try to use the Azure cloud platform, knowing that cloud and subscription is going to be the future of gaming. So this is just a, a good start for Sega. They say the alliance would form a key part of Sega's mid to long-term strategy, allowing the business to move forward with Super Game, a new initiative for developing new and innovative titles, where the key focuses are global online community and IP utilization. And then we see here, remember all this, where Sarah Bond was on this posting as well, as she's the one, I guess, running this partnership. And then we have this information here that it's not going to be a single game they're playing, it's going to be multiple games and they may use NFT. So it says the parent uh, company would, con they were considering investing 882 million over the next five years to achieve super game ambitions. And that people believe first that it was a single enormous title, but a new interval, new internal interview has clarified that it refers to a description Sega is giving to a number of high budget games that it has planned. So this is an interview with Sega's, uh, with VP Suji Yutsumi. And it says here, Sega offers a wide range of game content, including hardware and arcade content, which is made possible by its diverse range of technologies. We have defined Super Game as the development of AAA titles that cross over Sega's comprehensive range of technologies. And we will aim to achieve this in our five-year plan. Several titles are being developed within the framework of Super Game. And while each title will vary, there is no doubt that they will be interactive titles that go beyond the traditional frame framework of games. So it's hard to tell what this means. I guess they're making multiple games. I guess Super Game pretty much is just using cloud technology, just using the Azure technology. Games that are developed with that technology are going to be considered part of their Super Game series or whatever it is. And they, they mention things like arcade content. The, they have diverse range of technologies they're going to be defining super game as the development of triple a titles across all of these different technologies so could there be like i don't know triple a arcade stuff who i'm not really sure what that means i uh, continue on here to say several titles are being developed within the framework of super game and well each time i already read that for example in the past people who played games were called gamers but now watching games has become a culture in itself and such people can no longer be called gamers. Uh, I don't know. That's an interesting take. I guess, what do you call, you're just, gamers are not a thing anymore if you play video games. <laughs> okay. I think there is a great potential in the relationship between people who play and watch games. Okay. So they're going to want to be doing something with streaming and capitalizing on that as well. We are thinking of creating new entertainments within these possibilities. So maybe they're going to be using their technology as like a video streaming service. As a, who knows? Maybe Sega and Xbox are going to be teaming up to to launch a, a new streaming service like they did back with uh, the one that they just closed down like a couple of years ago, whatever it was called. Realizing that it's almost impossible to compete with Twitch and YouTube gaming and even, I guess, Facebook gaming now, which has gotten bigger. So... I don't, know. I don't know if that's a good idea, if that's what they're thinking of doing. But they say Super Game has to meet four criteria. It's multi-platform. Okay, so we know these games are not going to be exclusive to Xbox. But they can still come onto Xbox Game Pass, especially if they're using Azure. You would assume that they're going to be coming onto Game Pass at some point. Maybe day one, hopefully day one. Global multi-language development and simultaneous worldwide releases. That's good. So they're not going to be 
making these just for Japan. That's a good thing. But I think the games that they do make with this will be huge for getting people into Game Pass if these super games get launched into Game Pass. And they're AAA titles. Okay, so they are going to be AAA titles, so it won't, they're not going to be arcade style of games. Sega's general manager, Katsuya Hisei, said, added several projects are currently underway for Super Game. In my department, around 50 people are already involved in the initial stages. We expect the final number of employees will be several hundred. So this is huge. Several hundred employees are going to be working on this stuff and with using Microsoft's Azure technology. And then they go on here to talk about this recently registered trademark for Sega NFT. Now, NFT, I mean, like... We know gamers, I guess Sega doesn't want to call gamers gamers anymore, but we know gamers just don't want NFTs. We even just recently saw with the Ubisoft stuff, which was I think was absolutely ridiculous. Now, when it comes to NFTs, when they first announced it, they first talked about it, I personally don't fully understand them. I did a little bit more research on them. I somewhat understand them, but I can't say that I still fully understand it. And... I guess it's just kind of like a receipt of ownership for a digital asset that you can trade across games. You can trade with other people. And I guess the overall, what people would want to see if NFTs are going to be forced into games would be that you can buy a cosmetic, take that cosmetic and then sell it to somebody else when you're done with the cosmetic, which if that was something that they did. I don't even think you need NFTs to do that. You probably could just do that with general cosmetics and microtransactions, but Hey, they want to brand NFTs because they know it's a popular thing now, although I don't even think it's that popular and people will, will see the word NFT and, and be more attracted to it. They can upsell the price of things because they call it an NFT and make you believe that it's like a unique thing that you only own, whatever, right? The, the the theory that you can sell your cosmetics to somebody else when you're done with it, I think overall is a good theory. I think that's something that if you could do that currently with the cosmetics that you've spent hundreds of dollars on, why not be able to recoup some of the money that you've spent for a cosmetic you're never going to be able to use? But what we saw with Ubisoft last week was they, they had the NFTs for Ghost Recon they're not updating Ghost Recon anymore. They've closed off of these NFTs and they're pretty much, yeah, well, you are you spent all this money on this NFTs and I guess you're not going to be able to do anything else with it. So to me, it almost seemed like a scam and it's because people just don't aren't supporting it. Like they seems like Ubisoft made no money on NFTs with like the 400, they said they made like $400. But even after all of this, they said they're still going to pursue it and you're seeing more companies like Sega now trying to get into it with this trademark for Sega NFT. And they say here, the super game project could also incorporate cloud technology and NFTs Two technologies. Sega has recently been getting involved with gaming has a history of new expand of, of expansion through the connection of various cultures and technologies. For example, social networking and game video viewing are recent examples. So you can tell they're really they, with this, with Azure, they really want to get into like some making their games, but then somehow getting it onto like a social network of some sort where everyone can watch these games to expand the audience if in case they don't actually want to play them. And they continue here, say it is natural extension for the future of gaming that it will expand to involve new areas such as cloud gaming and NFT. Cloud gaming, definitely NFT, not sold on. We are also developing super game from the perspective of how far different games can be connected to each other okay so there you have it we heard about we heard about super game we heard about super game and we thought it was a big game now we know it's going to be a multitude of different games that sega is working on and they're going to be incorporating some sort of nft technology with it some sort of cloud to, well tech, the azure is the cloud technology and it's going to sound like it's going to be incorporating something along the lines of a social aspect to it, where if you don't want to play the game, you can just watch the game, which is obviously what we already have now with game streaming and Twitch. But Sega, I guess, really wants to do their, maybe do their own thing with it. But we'll wait and see what happens. And now this is a partnership with Xbox, with Microsoft. It's not going to be exclusive but i think there's a good chance that these games do get released into like xbox cloud gaming or, or something along those lines so very interesting stuff and i think overall i'm excited to see what it is 
I mean, Sega and Microsoft have always had a good relationship dating back to the Dreamcast games. I'm excited to see what their new open world Sonic game is. So it won't, it'll still be, I think, a very long time, though, before any of this happens. So let's just jump over here to comments and see what you guys think about this. Infurious one, two dollar super chat. I appreciate that. Thank you. Spartacus turns out to be Farticus. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Spartacus isn't. Uh, it's X. It's PlayStation's. I would say half-assed attempt to compete with Game Pass. I guess that's the best way to put it because th what they're doing essentially is saying, we know that our fans still want to pay us full price for our games, but we also know that a certain percentage are going to transfer over to the higher tiers of PS Plus and pay full price for our games, and it's all going to be on a digital store. We can double dip and just make money, more money off of our fans because we've made them believe that their $70 that they spent on a PlayStation game is more valuable than $70 spent anywhere else, which I talked about this at the beginning of the show. Absolutely delusional and ridiculous, and you've been brainwashed by a corporation. If you think spending more money on a video game is the better choice than getting the best value. So we'll leave it at that. All right. Let's go down here. So NFTs, NFTs. What's up, JX? How you doing? Welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Who hates Roblox? I don't know. I've never played Roblox. <laughs> Sega already backtracked on NFTs. Are they really going to try again? I mean, th that's what this sounds like because this is an article from, what are we, the ninth today? And this is an internal interview, apparently, from the VP, Suji Yutsumi. Uh, on, and it's from Sega Japan's recruitment website. It's been translated. So, yeah. I guess they are coming back. They're trying to bring in the NFTs. I think there's 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 a lot of money in NFTs and people are trying to capitalize on it. Although they're even with the big pushback, I guess for them, they see that the return on their investment with NFTs, even with the negative PR is still worth it. I don't know how they would see that after the Ubisoft stuff, but maybe, maybe it's still going. Uh, let's see. I can see the super games getting help by Xbox's new cloud publishing arm. Yeah, that that would be very cool as well. What's so bad about NFT? If you don't want it, don't buy it, right? Yeah, it's the same thing, I guess, with microtransactions. At the end of the day, if if all these games have NFTs in them, you don't you don't want it. You you don't like it, don't buy it. I agree with that for sure because you can't control how adults spend their money. If adult wants to spend their money buying NFTs, that's their choice. And who are we to tell them not to do it? I think the the problem with NFTs though is just the way that they're marketing it as like an NFT is a super rare thing that you can only get. There's only one of them and then you're going to be able to trade it around and sell it after, which we haven't seen any of that yet. Like they, if, if NFTs is the evolution of microtransactions where you can sell these things after you've used them to somebody else and you make some of your money back, then I, I don't see that that's a bad thing. I just... When are we going to see that? Because that's kind of how they're marketing it as. When what they're marketing these NFTs as, as you could literally just do with microtransactions. You don't need to make them NFTs. You could just do it with the current cosmetics out there and the way that they currently do things. But they want to use the NFT as branding, I guess, to make more money and upsell people on essentially just the cosmetic that would that if it wasn't named NFT would be like a tenth of the price, right? I think that's where one of the big issues comes in with it from like an industry standpoint, but I could be wrong. Cause like I said, I don't fully understand them. All right. There are ways to implement an economy in games without NFT. That's it. That's the, that's my point, uh, Jason. I agree. There are ways to implement economies and games that don't use NFTs. And that's why I think that they're using NFTs to just kind of sell these things at a way higher price than making you believe that, Oh, you have this rare digital asset that essentially is worth literally nothing. It's a digital asset. I don't know. NFTs need to go the way of motion gaming and just go away. <laughs> yeah. I remember when Sega had surprised me back in 2020 and many people know that Microsoft bought Sega and turned out to be a mini game gear from Sega. <laughs> I don't think like everyone, I think, Sega would be an incredible acquisition. Will they ever buy Sega? I don't think so. Uh, they've been trying to... There were... I saw something on Twitter 
where there were rumors that Nintendo was buying Sega back in like 2000. The the new the media and the insiders and all these people who have all inside information apparently have been trying to sell Sega for like two decades now. It just hasn't happened. Will we see it happen? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think Sega's doing just fine. I don't think they need to sell. I but I think Sega and Xbox have a great relationship. If it ever happened, it'd be it would be uh it'd be very interesting to see. We'll